Hey, uh, not a lot going on around here lately. Let's just see what's behind this door. Wow, okay, they are now saying the quiet part loud and clear. They're clearly actually so privileged they are creating new issues to be offended about when nothing else is going on in their mundane lives. I mean, they literally even say it. They're playing around. I'm playing around with different gender identities and different pronouns until I figure out exactly which one. Gender is not a game. This ain't Pokemon Rainbow, bitch. You can't trade and collect different genders and identities. It is not something to play around with. And it has very serious mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual implications if you do decide to transition. Lord! If you are new here, make sure to subscribe because we are the only, or one of the only, non-leftist lesbian YouTube channels that constantly critique and call out the bullshit. So the newest TikTok trend with America's youth is having a gender crisis after coming out. I'm so happy! Interestingly enough though, this is not just affecting middle-class white suburban females. No, this trend has transcended, pun intended, culture and race. Mortal Kombat, bitch, you have made it to the next motherfucking challenge. Me. And I mean, we've all seen this coming, right? You take away the definition of man and woman. Even when somebody figures out physically what they like, their sexual orientation, now they start to have another internal issue with the way they view themselves. And the truth is most people know when they are very young, four to six years old, if they have gender dysphoria, if they actually are transgender, and their sexual orientation usually comes out about eight to 10 years old. But this is not the age demographic that we're seeing here. Whoa. Pay close attention for a second. Do you remember a few years back, the early days of YouTube, when people would post their videos, you know, their coming out videos? They were usually made with their parents or simply done alone, and you can genuinely feel the fear, the sadness, the pain releasing. I'm gay, and um, Austin is too, and uh, we just wanted to like call and and tell you. Again? It's okay, hun. I knew you were. I knew you were, hun. <laughs> shush, shush. I even remember watching some of these and legitimately crying because I related so heavily to it. What I cannot relate to is the fact that these people seem to be enjoying having a gender crisis. But Arielle, it is way easier to come out now. Not everybody has to be sad about it these days. Yeah, but for some reason I don't actually think that's what's happening here. I think these people see potential for a viral moment, for some attention, whether positive or negative, attention's attention, and they seize it. Hey, what state of a gender crisis are you on. Personally, I had a dream last night where I came out to all my friends and family as non-binary. Am I gonna change the pronouns in my bio? Hell no! Desperate for attention, validation, addicted to the likes and comments. Think about it, if you were actually dysphoric, would you go and post it on your TikTok page? Like, would you want to even remember that scenario? Would you actively smile and act like gender crises are fun? Oh great, it looks like you finally figured out who you're attracted to gender crisis. Who invited you? Of course, I obviously know what dark humor is. And I understand that some people, that's how they use it to soothe themselves. But again, this ain't it. I don't think that's what's happening here. Because you know damn well, when the most minute microaggression happens in public, those b are the first ones to run to TikTok, to run to their phone, to post about it. Because b they got new content. Do I look like a boy or a girl? I am? Me. I think you're a boy. No, I'm a girl. Okay. Okay. What do you think you look like? Sorry. No. Just ugly. Okay. <gasps> Misgendered by someone who doesn't even speak English or isn't their first language? Who is likely making minimum wage? TikTok opportunity! Brianna made a great point here in saying, if you don't have thick enough skin to handle being misgendered, I don't think y'all are cut out to transition. Which is true, but again, I don't think that's what's happening here. I I actually think that a lot of these people have skin that is too thick. That they have become insanely entitled and blind to the real world. B never probably got slapped in junior high school. I'm just saying. My name is Diddy. I am non-binary. My pronouns are she, they. 
since being non-binary means absolutely nothing anymore, same with being queer, this person literally sat there and cried on camera, mind you, posted it to the internet for adding a set of words to her pronouns. Y'all f soft. Hi, yeah, so I'm currently having a gender crisis, so I'm gonna do that thing where you say your name and then the pronouns afterwards and see what, yeah, mm, mm -hmm. Jordan, she, her. Jordan, she's going to the market. It's what I've had, it's what I've had. It's what I got, yep, okay. Jordan, they, that. Oh, Jordan, they just went to the, they just, went to the market. Now, spiritually speaking, if this doesn't come from a place of ego, which I think it does, and attention, which I think it does, I do genuinely feel for these people. They are not doing the inner work and are constantly looking for external validation. But again, I don't think these kids are suffering the same way as we were 20 years ago. And we weren't suffering the same way the gays were and the LGBT people, whatever <laughs> our elders were 50 years ago. I think these kids are finding new, different ways to be oppressed. And once they figure it out, there's even more fake to unpack. So much so that they are questioning things that aren't even in existence. Would you still be non-binary if you were born male? Why does that even matter? You weren't born male. Try coping with shit that doesn't exist. That shit's gonna make you go nuts. Case in point, see how that works out for you. Let's change the subject. Cause we don't have time to unpack all of that. The absolute only thing that would make sense to me is if this is misogyny and sexual trauma at work. I mean, are they saying if I was born male and never experienced sexual trauma, would I still feel the need to identify out of my sex class? That's another story entirely. Again, don't think that's what's happening here. While I don't think that's what's happening in the majority of the cases in today's video, I do think that this is happening consistently more overall today than ever before. Not actual dysphoric people, but young women who were molested, which we know is very high statistically, who want to simply opt out of womanhood because it is triggering for them. What do you guys think it is though? Let me know in the comments. I use he him pronouns, right? But I don't identify as a man. But I'm trans. I'm trans non-binary. And I feel dysphoric about my body sometimes, like my curves and my butt. But at the same time, I like my boobs. Okay, what in the absolute hell is going on here? Seriously, what are the deeper issues at play? Also, just because somebody is entitled doesn't mean that they aren't simultaneously also suffering internally. Two things can be true at once. My friend Adam had this amazing thread on Twitter or on X. I wanna read this to you. I think he nailed it. About a year ago, I started watching libs of TikTok videos while on mute as I found that these people's body language and mannerisms would tell a deeper story than the rhetoric they were espousing and I was troubled by my revelation. They were often alone. They had trouble making eye contact with the camera. They were under the age of 26 and had very blank expressions on their face, even if their words were describing their pride or happiness. For many of these people, as much as they talk about community, their facial expressions would often show signs of physical isolation, loneliness, and fatigue. I get that these young people are lost and they're attempting to have ideology be the compass to finding camaraderie with others. However, the words they use are strong, but their face tells me they're not confident or sure about what they're saying because it is a script. I love that. F spot on. They're not true believers, but they are truly desperate to find purpose and not be alone in this world. Absolutely. I've seen many ex-leftists talk about how they were in such situations and found community in online subcultures that were filled with social misfits. I've said it before, these non-binary, queer activists, trans, non-whatever activists are yesterday's emos when I was in high school, they would have been emo. Because they don't fit into society, as they might say, they are more willing to adhere to leftist ideology, which projects that something is wrong with society and not with them. It's why they talk about acceptance so much because they've constantly felt unaccepted as individuals. What I found is there is a significant amount of young people who are desperate, lost, and emotionally suffering, finding refuge in an ideology that promises them community with other social outcasts, but a plan to save society from itself. But their ideology will never advocate for them to develop their social skills or seek genuine psychological help because the issue isn't with themselves, but rather with everybody else. Oof, oof, girl.
We're gonna do a slow clap. Adam, absolutely brilliant. He's also a great follow on X. Go and follow him. What do you guys think about all this? Honestly, at this point, I am just lost for words sometimes, but I always will find a way because I genuinely do care about kids and people's mental health. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and please make sure to subscribe to the channel and share the video if you enjoyed it. Other than that, I will see you guys back here on Sunday with a brand new video. Until then, I love you, love yourselves, keep calling out the bullshit. Bye.